and here we go. This is me at the Dork Table on Saturday, 23rd of March, 2019. And we're coming to you live on uh, this Saturday from Denmark at the Real Liberty media.com chat room and hey Grimner I think I did all this stuff right looks like all my gauges are performing the way they're supposed to and I will say thanks to Grim for the, all the work he does to help me get these crazy radio podcasts out there places like BitChute and YouTube and iHeartRadio and uh, hmm. all, well it's out there and thanks a lot for playing along on the Dork Table Podcast. And I want to say hi to the bots and bodies that are chatting and participating in the electronic world today. We've got Barman, Cowboy, Tech, Grimnir, Miss Kate, uh, Brackets DC, Asmo, Beth C, Chalcedony, Graham Z, I be Don C J Dread Meister Brow Ponder Gander Rain. We got the Bubbler Rob Works Trust Number One Van White Vin E, and then Anti is W Four D K V Weather Dork Phantom <laughs> Weather Dork Anti Beetle A hey, Beetle Colfax One O One Cyborg Noodle Dakota. A mental D dork cakes me frumped frumpy grommet Java Doctor two J's nines J's Kozu mm-hmm. Moose Girl Pone Size Sock Puppet Tech Man and Uno. And those are the participating players in the chat room of the Real Liberty Media. Where <sighs> it's not for the It's not for the weak of mind to play in that room, I'll tell you. Some of these people are sharp. They know their stuff. And today, I wrote down a name for the show. I like to do that. Give these crazy shows titles. And today, I was telling my wife a couple hours before the show, my freedom is better than your freedom. So today's my freedom is better than yours at the Dork Table podcast. Yeah, I know it says it, it says that, but it shouldn't. I know I changed it cuz uh in the MP3 it says the Dork Table and when I open the Dork Table it says 2019-0316 on the date and I know I saved it, but it doesn't update. Let me hit update here and see if that changes anything. Didn't do nothing. Three minutes into the show, and nobody knows where to find the dork table on a Saturday. Go figure. Anyway, if that's the biggest problem you've got, you win. Uh, yeah, I know it says, I know what it says, Grim. Ah, help, help, help. But it'll it'll probably change itself. Let me see what I get when I do this, because sometimes things change. When I click other shit, click, 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 no, no clicking, no changing. (laughs) And Grimner's giving me shit. There are a lot of moving parts in getting a radio show live on the air. Yeah, my wife's got to make coffee, uh, roll a spliff. I've got to drink the coffee. I have to smoke the spliff. Come on, it's a lot of movement. (laughs) <laughs> it's freedoms. Okay, back to the show. I'll quit screwing around. But yeah, I'm teasing with Cirque earlier today. And some, you know, we play around, and I'm kind of strange on this uh, comic relief. And I said I was just going on a rant with her about my freedom is way better than your lousy old freedom, and because it's so ridiculous to say that to your partner. I mean, it was just a ha ha ha. And the more I thought about it, why the more I realized how much we do that to each other in the real world of electronics, you know, the internet. My this is better than yours, and my that's better than yours, and your that's better than mine. Oh, oh, what are we going to (laughs) do? 
<laughs> we can't get we can't get a level playing field here. Let me see where'd my mouse go. And uh anyway, so I woke up this morning to the uh just the end bit of the freakers ball. <laughs> and a couple of weeks ago, I'm pretty sure it was me being absolutely disgusting here at the dark table. I probably had Vinny on. And I was teasing Vinny about in West Hollywood, the the gays are having a big problem figuring out what to do with the new sperm tax that's coming. And last night, Grim read a link about a sperm tax in Georgia that they want to put across as a bill. (laughs) But actually, the more you get into it, it's got more to do with abortion than anything else. But what a what a crafty way to get an abortion bill in there, you know. So well, my hats off to these politicians. They're they're very creative. They're getting better at their craft. I mean, if you're gonna lie to me, can you at least make me laugh while you do it? You know, it hurts less when I'm laughing than when you're putting this bank thing in and out of my parts. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, Mr. Anti says, WD-40 and contact cleaner will do wonders. Yeah, but my moving parts are old. Uh, I get a pass for being an older guy. And if I don't, I want one. From now on, you all, if I'm older than you, you all have to kiss my ass. That's the new way it is. Because... You know, at the dork table, we don't have rules and regulations and enforcement. We just got expectation and disappointment. <laughs> Wait, we, hold on a second. <clears throat> well, that was fun. Made me laugh myself into a cough. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so he says, uh, anti says, Wait, let's go back to Grim. My, that is the best that of the... That's that tried that thatness. <laughs> yeah, Grim, let's let's have some fun. And uh Anti says I'm still a tad embarrassed. I didn't immediately recognize I was speaking to you and not Flash yesterday. Yeah, oh, yesterday we were doing a little experimenting with Anti to get help him sort out how to use his equipment. So he went on live stream. That didn't get recorded, but it was live. And he'd had asked for, hey, can somebody give me a wire and help me test this out? And I waited, and nobody did, so I figured, oh, I'll do it. I, I had a little time to kill before I meet and serve. And <laughs> when, when we opened the wire, we opened a, an independent line. And there's a way to open a party line that'll take more than one phone call. So when Grim connected, it booted me off, but anti didn't know that (laughs) poor anti but i did i was trying to type it into the chat room at the time but five things going on at once everybody's going a different direction just like in real life and we still managed to accomplish something but it was a little uh, it was a little chaotic and and two novices and Grimner, poor Grim, because he, he's the one that knows how to work this stuff the best out of everybody. So he always gets dragged into the help of the newer guys with the electronic shit. And somehow or another, between the group, we always manage to come through with a show, even if they're crazy shows or like Vinny half ass shows where he doesn't he he doesn't record it, he just goes on the uh on the live feed, <laughs> plays weird music for an hour. Now, some people would say for Vincent, that is a sign of growth. <laughs> and, and I don't know. Other people probably could give a shit. But anyway, Vinny didn't show up to Dork today. So I'm dorking alone at the Dork Table Podcast, and I've decided to brag about my freedom is better than your freedom. And I don't know what that really means, but I've been hearing it from people for years and years and years. And when you think about what they say to you, 
<laughs> what it really means is my freedom makes your freedom look like nothing. <laughs> okay. How do you come to that decision? What What is the great gauge of freedom that we all are looking at and judging freedom at and by and for and how? And we still don't get along worth a fuck in the long run. But some people have better, better freedom than you. And that's kind of what I wanted to rant about today. Now, I don't think of myself as one of those people that's got better freedom than you got. What I think I got is the lack of uh, interest in how this crap is really done. doesn't really interest me at all. I only do what I have to do on paper to do it, to shut everybody up. I don't believe it's real. I don't participate in it, uh, in it like it's real. I just do. It's like um, taking a bath. You need to do that. <laughs> so that's pretty much how uh, I manage to survive life, I think. And people have, there's so many ignorant ways to gauge a person's um, worth. And the universal way to manage that is by your personal wealth. And this is why I don't give two flying shits about my personal wealth is your economy is based on debt notes. So when I'm in the economy, hey, moose girl. I, I thought you'd be at work on a set. No, maybe it's Saturday. Um, good to see you here at the old dork table. I'm ranting about money. Because the way I look at this, the way that I feel when I'm involved in it, I'm passing around these debt notes. Someday you'll get paid. Now, they do it in uh, with cards. They do it with currency. However you want to do the transaction, whatever we're doing, it's not real. Okay, We've agreed it's real. And we do it, which in a sense makes it real. But on the other hand, the government could wake up in the morning and decide to shut it all down. It's their money. We're just using, well, it's actually the bank's money, the uh, central bank. And they allow us to use the notes to pass them around so that we can promise to someday pay each other all these debts. (laughs) But in the meantime, what the money goes for is to pay the bank for printing the paper that we pass around to each other as currency and fiat. And, oh, man, it's getting so huge now. Uh, I think I was ranting about that. I think uh, Trump added another trillion to the existing 20 trillion. So now it's 21 trillion. And, oh, no, this is how can people be so gullible? to believe these numbers are, are real, let alone sustainable. Anyway, so I look on it with that um, perspective. Now, if it's not real, it'll collapse eventually. And then we're going to find out you know, who's who, because we won't have much for a little bit. If that should happen, I figure that the bigger places will collapse and the smaller places will scramble to get back together. But... That's going to be, I guess we'll see what's going to happen. doesn't look too good right now. But we have this, uh, the new war coming up in Venezuela to entertain all you warmongers out there in radio land. Any of you people for this? Because we need more oil for the Koch brothers. They want that shitty cheap oil that they can get from Venezuela. And Venezuela got wise to that, hey, buying cheap, selling high in America shit. And they went, hey, we're going to add a little little, uh, price increase to your cheap, shitty oil that you want to buy. So now they figured out if they can directly pipe it in, cut them out. And the way they're going to do it is use the military like they always have. And it works. And it works and it works and it works. And I got into a... Like a, not a disagreement, but on the Real Liberty Media, we type. There's not a lot of ways to make one point one way and have it stand. That's what this means. So people are going to read what you write, take it how they want to. And I have this really uh, 
strong opinion about the quality of the resources that were sold as collectives. And I have come to the decision because of people like Larry Woods. Hold on one second here. I mean, to give people credit, I would say people like Grimner and Rob Works and Vinny. Uh, people I've been, you know, sticking around close to. Don C knows his shit. There's a lot of people I don't really chatter much with on the Real Liberty Media, but they know their shit. And these people brought me to this decision because I learned some of the shit they learned. Not all of it, but some of it. And as my knowledge about the situation got more clear, started to realize that it's the delivery of the electricity that we get that causes the problem. Not the electricity itself. <laughs> but to explain it on a radio program called the Dork Table, nah, I leave that for the pros like Larry and his peers. And I've done radio with him, so I've had the experience of talking to him and listening to what he said and making sense of what he said in a simple way for me. And now here we are in like 2019. And what I see is the present day sitting freaking idiots in power. They have every opportunity to make him legal get the prohibition, do away with it, and start fixing shit with hemp. But they don't. They're just going to build more pipelines. And How many dinosaurs do you people think there were? <laughs> Is this not obvious that one more time, however they're doing it, we're getting skinned, and we're getting lied to, and we're getting fed second-rate shit? Then I read, well, I got an electric car. Da, da, da. Okay, well, still... You're going to pay a premium to have an electric car because it uses less oil. And then the state's going to punish you and tax somewhere because you're not using the paying the gas tax. You're not using the gasoline. You're using the electric. So that's going to go up to balance out the loss from the gas to the... It's insane. And we do this willingly? I mean, wow. Sometimes I feel like I'm just around a bunch of children that don't know what damn day it is. But then I get on the RLM and a few of the guys remind me, no, 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 we see the same thing you see. And we have a lot of uh, different ways to explain it. Rob's way to explain it is, and they all suck. I'm not sure what Grimner's way is. Grimner doesn't really have a complete total, like, uh, standby line, but <laughs> Rob Works does. And I would say Moose would just say, fuck it all. I don't think Moose is for any of this crazy shit we're dealing with. And it's, yeah, Cirque's over there saying, and it's not Moose's first rodeo. She's been to the rodeo once or twice. Yeah, she's even saying right to me. Usually you're arguing with me about what I'm saying because I say it a different way than you're used to hearing it. And when you read it, it seems like something different. And, you know, that's just a matter of interpretation because that's what we do here in the Real Liberty Media chat. We type in each other. And some people, yeah, some people are uh, aggressive and some people aren't. I happen to be one of the more aggressive writers in the chat room. And I think that the way I write can be interpreted in many ways depending on who's reading it. So it's not gospel. It's just lines on a screen for you guys to argue with me about or agree with me about. Or maybe you'll figure it out for yourself in a different way. That's what I get from it. I see the same problems today that I saw well before I met Larry Wood on the radio. But I added his input into what I saw as a problem. I went, hey, that does seem to make sense. That explains to me how this got fucked up in the first place. And the lack of knowledge that we share as a collective. I mean, the crap that people know. What do you think? 
baseball games, hockey scores, football games, celebrities, all the shit that really matters because if you have a real life and you work, you need some time away from all that fucking shit it gets to people. And so they take up a, a hobby like a sport. And I got to admit, a sport as a hobby is way more interesting than finding out what a fractional reserve banking progress is progress. What the hell would you call that? Their program, the way that they do banking is, if you tried to do that in a system that you're in, they'd put you in jail for 50,000 years and fine you a trillion dollars. And this is the way that we live with our existing governments. But they don't tell us the exact truth. They kind of lie about shit. Now, they're the kings of manipulation and misrepresentation, misdirection. Probably the kings of lies when you think about it. And look at all the ways we've been duped over the years. Good God. I can't remember the last time a politician or an educator or a religious figure came out and spoke the truth about anything. Except uh, the Catholics, uh, yep, we did poke the kids. Sorry, how much will you take? We're, we'll never do it again. We promise. <laughs> the church diddlers. And you got to think about that. If one church diddles with the children, why would one church be any different than another church? Hmm. Could it be the skin color of the church? <laughs> What else would matter? What bit of dirt you're born on, I suppose? Um, let's see. I was born on this bit of dirt, and I belong to this church, so like my freedom is better than yours. I'm better than you because I have all these advantages in life that you don't have. <laughs> like I'm white. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> People and they're whining about slavery in America. The blacks, oh, your your family owned my family 400 years ago. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> you morons. You know they don't seem to understand that it's the same wealthy and power today are related to the people that owned their family all those years ago. <laughs> they want to they want to hold it against fellow slaves. <laughs> they don't even know it. Now, who do you blame for misinformation like that? The, the government, the media, people for being so ignorant to get conned into this fantasy shit to be pitted against the other guy <laughs> because somebody else owned their relatives and you, you're the same color as those fuckers, so <laughs> it's all your fault. I I don't know. And over history has proven that everybody had sometimes been a slave to someone. Didn't have anything to do with the color of your skin. It had to do with where you were. And I had read some interesting articles on the interwebs about the, the so-called slave trade and the way it was explained. You know, And think about this. If you tried doing this today, I don't think it would work. But go get yourself on a 200-foot schooner and load the the bottom of the boat with live human beings and sail from Africa to the Americas, whatever, and see how many bodies you have alive when you treat them the way that it's explained to us, how the slaves were treated on the trip over. And then show me how these people managed to be taken away from their home uh, starved and tortured and then taken to this other place and then built an empire through free labor, picking cotton and digging in shitholes and doing whatever they were forced to do. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make no sense like that, but I'll tell you what did. <laughs> Black Indians that lived in America already. <laughs> Who would have ever thought of a thing like that? Dark-skinned Indians in America? No, <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> All those black people, they came from Africa. 
Millions and millions of them survived those trips across the water. <laughs> and then they reproduced for 400 years. And look at them today. They run football and movies. They're real Jews, just like everybody else wants to be. Anyway, this is my version of the ridiculousness of the history. And then you can find links, modern day links written by people that have common sense and things like traveling across 3,000, 5,000 miles of ocean under terrible conditions and being starved and beaten and all. What are you going to be like when you get to the other side? <laughs> I'm going to be ready to work. How about you? <laughs> Yeah, give me that cotton field mess. I can't wait to work for you. <laughs> so, hmm. well, I think people were more or less uh, conditioned, just like we're conditioned in, in the times that have changed. The truth was, I don't know, buried, and the lies, they got written. The lies were written, and we've been passing them around ever since we was little kids. And, you know, like little kids, we don't know what we're saying. We're just saying what we were told. Don't make me responsible for repeating the shit I grew up hearing. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I guess that wasn't as funny to the rest of the crowd <laughs> as it is to me. But my freedom's better than your freedom. Don't you forget it. And because I have... Uh, uh, why would my freedom be better than somebody else's? I don't think it matters, but I guess it does. We're all arguing about it all the time. Your state has medical marijuana and recreational cannabis. You're light years ahead of us where I live. <sighs> Crying out loud. How can you be light years ahead of somebody else by going into the past? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I mean, if if uh, the Fed would get off their damn ass and just go on like a, even YouTube or Twitter and say, look, okay, the game's up, we lied, it would change the whole course of the future, what would come at us. But they give us this legalizing and regulation and these little doses and this state gets it and that state don't get it. Then two years goes by and then that state finally gets it. Wow, what do, see? divide and conquer why do you think there's 50 states and when they call it one country then you got 50 states with 300 million people wanting something different <laughs> i have no idea what i said pancakes except hey how the hell are you i'm just ranting about my freedom is better than your freedom argument i don't know I argue with everybody. That's what Hans tells me. I come in the Real Liberty media and start arguments all that time. And I tell him only with you, but... <laughs> well, hold on one second here. <clears throat> Thank you for being patient. <laughs> but Moose is asking, we are arguing? Uh, that's all a matter of how you look at it, because what do they call it? Um, debating. You know, when you see something this way and I see something that way and they don't meet and it seems like an argument. That's the whole point. You see it differently than I do. And being right. Ooh, man, that's what we want to be in this electronic world, people. I'm telling you, if you want to be anything, you want to be right. And you know how you're right? You typed it first. <laughs> so, defining moment of being correct in the electronic world is I typed it before you, nana nana boo boo, look at my timestamp. <laughs> like me and making making these off the wall jokes on the dork table about this new sperm tax that the federal government was coming up with and now they've actually done it. <laughs> and Grim was reading it about I even copied the link. Oh my goodness. Let me see what I got for links. I might read something here and try to get off my mine is better than yours but hey you know what i got a tesla on einstein link or not link but meme 
And you don't know how true these things are. I mean, the Times 1935, the Times in 1931. But this is what the newspapers supposedly said. <laughs> when asked for his opinion on the theories of contemporary Albert Einstein, Tesla gave a scathing analysis of relativity theory, calling it a magnificent mathematical garb which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the utter lying errors. The theory is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. Now, that's from Time, 1935. And here it says, Tesla's own theorem went unpublished, yet his inventions displayed a beautiful simplicity that reflected the natural order. My explanations of natural phenomena are not so involved as his. They are simpler and will throw light on many puzzling phenomena of the cosmos. Time, 1931. So I would venture to guess by the presentation of this, and it shows a little bit of uh, history to it, this might be very well be true. And this is the stuff that people pointed me towards when I was younger. But I didn't actually find out about Tesla and understood who he was until... 1987, I think, 86 or 87, somewhere in there. And when I did, having the knowledge just made me stranger to the people I already knew than I already had been. And trying to enlighten them, well, you got to see this. You know, it was on a, we had a DVD, not a DVD, we had a VHS um, cassette tape. And the title was Tesla Man Out of Time. And I must have watched the damn thing 10 to 20 times over the three years I was there. But other people just ignored me. Nah, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. And here I am all, what, 35 years later. And whether I was crazy or not, probably was. Didn't help anything. But the truth turned out to be Tesla was the right guy. And the other guy was the fraud. The Einstein character. And... You know, I'm supposed to be a good Jew and all that crap with my mom. But you know what? These people were fucking lying. So, you know, I don't have to please my mommy anymore. And I can be a little bit more open about the frauds of my own people, so to speak. You know, because they're fucked. Anyway, i seen this link on here. Wait a minute. Let me close this cookie thing. Crazy. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Fentanyl. <laughs> Smuggled from China is killing thousands of Americans. <laughs> this government is so desperate to put the blame on anything or anyone beside itself. And as long as we keep with this, you know, the media rat trap with, oh, the Russians and Trump and then this and the that and the fighting here and the... And it's all about resources and power. Got nothing to do with people or making things any better. Give me a second. Anyway. <sighs> Moose Girl writes, Lincoln, Nebraska. We have not had a disaster that has been this widespread in the state, I don't think, ever. Pete Ricketts, March 18th, while visiting Wood River. And then Moose Girl adds to that, he doesn't think ever. <laughs> now, I think I interpreted that little bit of, of information, but see what I mean? That's I could read it one way and somebody could hear it completely different and think you're talking wonderful about this guy. Who is to know, you know what makes our noodles cook the way they cook? But, <laughs> yeah, mental Jews, Jews lie. I know, it's just sad. And, and everybody fucking lies. That's the whole problem. We lie about things, but are too arrogant and stubborn as a group to face the fact that, hey, you know, it's possible this ain't true. <laughs> We're just agreeing with it because if you go against it, your peers are going to look at you funny and call you names. And I know from experience that is exactly what happens when I've gone out into the physical world and 
taken any attempt to repeat some of the things I know about medicine or politics goes nowhere with the public. Just die. Dies a slow death. Well, quick death. A death death. you got to change that subject and get on to something stupid quick before somebody gets their itty-bitty feelings hurt. And there you go. So if it's that way for me, it must be the same way for everybody else. Doesn't matter what language. It doesn't matter your level of education. It matters about how seriously you believe your freedom is better than my freedom. <laughs> That's what matters. We each seem to, in our own little ways, stick up for the very freaking monster that keeps us where we don't want to be mentally. You know, I don't see a lot of people. It, why I see one person out of a whole room that ever has anything good to say about government, and then the only good thing about government is that the government's at war making money. Well, I kind of disagree. I know that seems to be the way it is. It looks that way. But if we're all in debt and we're all living on credit, what is the catalyst to stop all this crap? If they're going to do it, whether they get paid or not. See, we've been lied to yet again. Somehow. I cannot define and explain it. But I get on the radio and at least give it a little thought. Try to bring up a new way to look at this mess. right? Because according to the, the government and the internet and the information we were given... If these people aren't funded by Congress, why, they can't operate. Well, if the money's all fake and bullshit, how do they operate now? <laughs> See, it's an agreed-upon deal, and these cards will get you this, and these cards will get you that, and this bits of paper will... And it's an agreed-upon thing. But if it ever shuts down because we don't own the papers and the plastic everybody should know that that card that you put into a bank machine even even the bank will tell you that's their card they can confiscate that card from you anytime they freaking please to and all you can do is you know appeal it <laughs> cuz we're we're an appealing people in this world now you know we either give the government all the power to do whatever it freaking pleases to us and then and then when it does what do we do? We, we appeal it and beg them not to. Please, Mr. Government, don't do that to me. <laughs> and, of course, it's a matter of how much funding you've got. They're not after the small people like me. Good Lord. But if you're a person with a lot of digits after your bank account number, hmm, chances are the the worry of having it taken away by a government that's so vile it, it kills its own people. I could I could see that as a threat. I would feel threatened like that if I was living at home right now. Home. <laughs> My ex-home. You know, the one that I don't live in anymore. <laughs> Can I fix your weather? Can anybody fix the weather? Hmm. No dork kicks. I think that the government did everything to the weather that they could think of doing so it would be like it is. So if you got any complaining to do, I think it's the federal government. <laughs> Somewhere 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Just look for a big building that looks like a dick and it'll take you right to the White House. Just find the big dick building. You'll see what I'm talking about. Because, you know, there's an obelisk in every city of doom on the planet. Hmm. Oh, wasn't it? Who was it? The Secretary of State. Who is the Secretary of State in the States now? I seen a little thing on Mines, I think, a week ago or so. This week, maybe. And they got the Secretary of State from America going over there, wearing his Yamaha and kissing the wall and making the Jews go see. See how they dance for us? Look at this. This is this is ridiculous. But hey, they do it. <laughs> because I believe. Now this is how I look at it. 
if I'm involved in this group and we have rituals and we've always done our rituals and you want to please the group by performing the ritual, you're never going to be in the group. Now, if you've ever been in a tight group of people, you know how the the old you know the old timers treat the new people coming in ten twenty years later way different than they treat the old timers, and that's how I see politics. These Jews have been suckering everybody in the Western world with this big performance, this religious crap, to justify Palestine, and it works. And then that what they do they. They could send American freaking police to Israel to learn how to be nasty fucking pieces of shit like they are. <laughs> so they can go home and treat the population like shit. But the population is still, as a group, as a collective, running around all over the place. My freedom's better than your freedom, Mr. Saudi Arabian. <laughs> But my problem with all that is, you think the Saudi Arabians give a shit, read a word, hear a word, understand a word of English that is said, and if not, who's writing it in their language for them to know that, you know, your freedom's so much better? (laughs) I don't see it. I don't think they're any different than me. I've never lived where they're at. I've only read about what I'm told their life is like. I have my own experience, and I, my mind somewhere must seem to believe at some level everybody's free in their daily life to some degree, unless you're in chains or something, I suppose. But in a, you know, in a modern-day society, the way that societies operate, it doesn't take much to interact without a lot of trouble. And what I've noticed the internet does is it picks on a an idea like these school shootings. Wow, these things are so brilliantly thought out. I even saw Obama make a a, a YouTube link. Well, ended up on YouTube, not maybe a a YouTube link, but apologizing sort of, kind of like explaining. Well, the reason we did Sandy Hook was for your own good because you need to understand the dangers of gun blah 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 blah. So what this guy's doing is he's milking his own people, softening them up, you know. Oh, the dangers of guns, you're better off without them. And these idiots are following this guy's, you know, lead. And they use a make-believe thing like a drill. And then they just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. Lie. For years they fucking lie. They lie all the way to the court. They lie in court. <laughs> We're still arguing to this day, some people, not me, about the reality of what took place. And the decision I came to was, it doesn't matter what took place. It matters what people believe took place. And the you know the sources that we get our knowledge from have a great way to manipulate the way they explain shit, so that when it hits Joe Voter, Joe Voter goes right into voting trance. I hate Hillary. Fuck Hillary. I love Donald. Donald is my man. And where does all this crap come from? Neither one of those people gives a flying fuck about anybody but themselves and the way that you know that is <laughs> look at their wake you know their wake is not all these great things they accomplished is all these disasters they were evolved in now let's see if we can take it to court and prove it by god because my freedom's better than your freedom where i come from a man is entitled to a jury by his peers and in other countries a man's entitled to uh you got five seconds to run before I start shooting at you. And I'm not so convinced this voting crap is any better than that, whatever that is. <laughs> and I read so much. I read so many opinions about other countries on the reallibertymedia.com chat. And some of it is actually from people who've been in other countries and have experience. But unfortunately most of it is just like a 
uh, Fox links and, you know, memes and crappy shit about places that somebody would like to go someday but probably never been to. Uh, it's my experience with other people that when you've been somewhere, the first thing you really understand is the difference between the government you were told is there and the people that you meet that live there. Because <laughs> no matter where you go, we're all the freaking same. Just different languages. And I would explain that today. I was up early, got the last hour, half hour of uh, the Freakers Ball. So that's 7.30 a.m. my time. And today I wanted to do, go to town and get my wife something from a store. And I was real anxious to go out there. So I left like an hour before I should have left. <laughs> and I found myself with a little time to lounge around and, and just enjoy my little Danish life. So I went and got me a chocolate muffin. <laughs> I love these things. This bakery got these chocolate muffins and da 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 And I get my chocolate muffin and I realized that I'm walking around in, you know, the quietest time of day before the stores are open. And I'm just enjoying myself walking down the street eating a chocolate muffin in Denmark. <laughs> and in a million years I would have never thought, hey, you know what? When I'm an old man, I'm going to go find me a nice young Danish wife and I'm going to go find me a store to find me a chocolate muffin. And, you know, on my way to do other things, I can enjoy myself doing selfish things. And they're so innocent. You know, I have money in my pocket to go to the bar to drink. But I thought, 9 o'clock in the morning. Because, you know, you pass the bar and the first thing, now it's too early for all that. Or I'm going to go have a drink. <laughs> and I passed. So I went up to the bakery for a chocolate muffin <laughs> and to me this is the exact opposite of who i am because i've aged into this calm <laughs> came out of the chaos survived life and ended up where i'm at doing what i'm doing and it's uh, so innocent and boring and dull that no bad if anything bad happens to me, i can't imagine what it would be i'd have to get hit uh, by lightning or maybe a meteor would have to land right on top of me and me alone to uh, feel that this place isn't for me to be here anymore. So I'm pretty comfortable. Anyway, now, does that mean that my freedom is better than your freedom? Mm. I believe this, and we have these disagreements on the Real Liberty Media because of laws and countries and all this other shit and i don't really think any of that matters until you make commerce the number one priority on your stay in a foreign country and that wasn't my goal i didn't come here to to make any money that wasn't part of the deal in the first place so employment is that's the key cornerstone because they want to you know hold you responsible for your income tax and <laughs> it's such a beautiful game anyway lighty lighty on the smoky smoky while i'm doing the radio how rude anyway what we got going on hey woody showed up we got master bro chatting about something with moose girl and who else is there? Man, tall pancakes. And Beetle. And the crowd's hanging out and having a little having a little chatter, little giggle on the main feed today while I rant on my crazy idea of freedom. Uh, isn't freedom a mental isn't that a mental state that you're in? I don't how do you put it? Uh, I mean, until you're physically threatened by an entity of some kind, how is your freedom threatened in any way? I mean, if you're wandering around in life and you're driving here and you're doing this and you're doing that, at that time you're free, right? This is the way I see it. So until enforcement comes along and interrupts your freedom, you know, to check your paperwork and make sure that you're a functioning fucking member of society and you're obeying all their damn little codes and statutes and bullshit like that 
And actually, that's what drove me away from society in the first place. Oh, Dork Cakes is listening to the program. I didn't know you weren't. I thought you stopped by on Saturday to catch in on the Dork Table podcast and see what's going on in the world. And yeah, I'm really stuck on this freedom thing right now. Freedom, my freedom is superior to your freedom. How is that possible if you're not physically chained to something? Where does the lack of freedom come in? Because I hear and use the term debt slave. Uh, I saw my father be a debt slave. He had to do this job in order to keep us all in inside and eating and have cars to drive and all these things that he did. So I grew up with that. You know, uh, if you don't participate in the system, well, then you're, you know, you're out there somewhere and people think you're living in a log cabin in the woods, using rabbits to wipe your ass, fighting bears for food. And that's kind of warped kind of crap we've developed into believing because through the films, which, I mean, crying out loud, you ever see a movie about the woods that didn't warn you about the dangers of the freaking woods? Then, how many of us have spent time out in the woods and nothing happens in the woods? The animals I've encountered, I was bigger than any of them except maybe an elk or deer a few times. And they were so scared of my presence, they smelled me and went, holy shit, human, I better get my ass the fuck out of here. So in the in the woods, I've never been around anything big enough to attack me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a yakking on my pie hole, Mr. Mental. I'm doing the Dork Table podcast solo today. I had no hostages. So I decided to be clever and show the world that freedom is a mental illusion. It's a bullshit story. You're not free. You're not a slave. It's not, it's not none of that. These things are taught to us to believe by other people, right? Wait a minute. Hmm. Didn't have to teach me how to breathe. You didn't have to teach me how to see or how to hear, but other influences have always been really big on controlling those three things. What I feel, what I see, what I hear, telling me what it all means, and explaining it to me, and all that kind of nonsense. And as I aged and started to really understand what was life was going on around me and seeing it more clearly... I started to really understand these grown-ups are a bunch of fucking lion sacks of shit. None of them tell the fucking truth about nothing. And here I am, a grown man, and for years I had to survive in that world of bullshit, and I didn't completely understand all of it. And I don't now. I got a much better grip today than I did when I was 30 and finding out and trying to experience it my own way. Not... (laughs) Not doing life the way the the man told me to do it. This is what you're going to do, and you're going to like it. And I said, I don't think so, sport. I got other ideas. And those are not popular words to say. The world is not ready for, I want to do this my own fucking way. Leave me alone. But you could fail. Yeah, well, I learned to walk, didn't I? Figure that one out. <laughs> Jeez. Everything that you learn to do when you're small and you're in, you know, child, all that shit's all dangerous. Why would it change because you're older? You know, I, I don't think the danger levels change. I think they're just different. It, it's according to what you can take at the age that you're at at the time. Your troubles will come to you like that. And now that I'm grown and old and whatnot, my troubles would be, hmm, I would expect my troubles to be physical because, you know, the body's breaking down and all that help I got from the Rockefeller medicine in the, uh, well, 2000s, the first 10 years of 2000, that pretty much almost trapped me, but I got lucky and got out of that. Now what? I don't know. I guess uh, 
I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting older. It doesn't scare me or any of that. But once upon a time, I was 20 and didn't think I was going to ever become 30. So that particular mentality's never really left. So I'm kind of amazed I wake up in the morning daily, <laughs> every day. I open these eyes and go, wow, I'm still here. I don't get it. And uh, I don't know. It must be about Cirque and Hannah and the doctor. <laughs> it can't be about anything else. Because, you know, what has your attention in my world, you know, the way I look at it, if it has my attention, it requires my attention. And like on the dork table this week, freedom, the word, the way we use it, what does it really mean? And we all say this crap all the time. In different ways, we might not use the word freedom, but we're constantly having input and output about the idea. And, and it dawns on me, you have to be a willing participant of this game for them to threaten your freedom. But there's so many sneaky, freaking shitty ways to trap you through it without you even knowing it. That now that's where hmm. <laughs> Grimner, you are already older. <laughs> I'm older than you, Mr. Grimner, too, but uh, not older than Miss Mary. Miss Mary's my senior, she's my um, what do you call it? <laughs> my elder. <laughs> that ought to make her crack up. She'll probably be mad at me when she hears that. Don't listen to the dark table, Mary, <laughs> anyway. But older, younger, but here we go. My question was this earlier this week. What obligates us to this social insanity? <laughs> if you can find it uh, to be anything besides insanity, I sure like to know what's the cornerstone of your sane society. Would it be, oh, the inoculations or the fluoride in the water GMOs in the food, oh, the chemtrails in the sky, <laughs> all the possibilities. I mean, we see the final results of stuff that's taken place. And then we're supposed to believe the very people that lie to us about what fucking money is to tell us the truth about what they're doing to us when the results are so negative and then they keep writing more stories oh we've got people from china that are pumping fentanyl into the united states and why why would they bother look at all the people that are on the rockefeller medication now getting it legally through the state <laughs> and these people have done the numbers and the numbers show you 10% of illegal drugs is compared to 90% of legal drugs. So 1 out of 10 people using drugs, pills, needles, that kind of crap, is doing it illegally. The other 9 are going through the procedures of state. And they're getting the same freaking results as the damn drug addict. Why is that? written so unclearly so you can't really specifically come to that decision without somebody else pointing you hey look at it like this because this is where we're at and the uh wow the cdc the ama the fda all these organizations that we've been taught are good for us the grown-ups in the real liberty media know what these what these organizations do um there's a few holdouts, you know, people that are, uh, what was, what is that you call it, Cirque? They have hope. My wife says the, you know, the some good meaning people, they have hope things will improve. Now, I don't know, to, to be that in that far of a pocket in this character, I'd have to be hopeless to think I needed hope in the first place. So I'm not there, I'm somewhere else. And it probably doesn't translate very good on the radio. Not only that, but the difference in... I've only got the memory of where I came from. I don't have physical anymore. I can't 
open my front door and you know see California. That's insanity. But I can open up my memory and see California. And then I can look at a link and see what California's become. And wow, <laughs> just it's so disappointing. And still in my mind, my freedom is better than your freedom because it's mine. I'm the one doing it. And uh, I don't see Cirque. You know, I know I talked about this. I call this my prison. And. And it is, you know, because I gave my word and I did all this stuff and me and Cirque did this, that, and we promised each other a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, it's, you know, my obligation is to do what I'm doing. But somehow or another, I still find a sense of freedom in doing it that <laughs> it probably makes no sense. I gave up my freedom to meet a woman that I wanted to belong with. You know, that kind of thing. And so far, so good. It's worked out. But you know how life can be. Life can do all kinds of horrible shit and make people believe any fucking thing it wants to. So to stay in a positive, free state of mind, but accept that you're in a prison because your uh, physical is limited. I'm limited by borders now because I'm married to a Dane and I settled down. So coming and going as I please, <laughs> just because of being married is off the table. If she tried that crap, I'd say, oh, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so by holding that opinion, I get the same one back. You know, I guess that's, uh, that might be the rarity is that in the long run, I got a partner that at the core of everything we agree. And the detail is shit that doesn't really matter. That's the crap we disagree with. What color should it be? You know, nonsense, aesthetics, uh, personal taste, but never freedom because <laughs> we, we all know where, where freedom goes when you get married to somebody. So to hold that mentality you know, that I don't feel bad about it, so I, it's not a constant in my mind that I'm not free. But I read and read and read and see and link and watch and all this other crap. And the the despair from the other side of that, people that aren't free. Now that, that may come across to me and, and I could, repro you know, how do you say that? Represent that idea myself and not really understand the way it sounds to you. <laughs> I'm the one saying it, and uh, that's why we, you know, that's why we decided to, to do the dark table in the first place to uh, voice some off-the-wall opinions about stuff that everybody else is standard, and this is the way this is, and that's all there is to it. Nothing, nothing gets in, nothing gets out, and I belong to a, a mindset of people that doesn't hold that agreement you know we're not we didn't sign any contracts and the contracts we did sign those are even though they're public and all this other crap they're very personal you know like grim and moose girl on that radio i get a giggle when moose girl gets distracted or doesn't or mutes herself off and has to takes her a little bit to get back to the and grim's going hey What'd you do? Where's the moose? <laughs> it's that that same connection to a partner, as innocent as radio partners are. It's this, but in the long run, it's that same thing where uh, uh, we function better with somebody else than we feel we do alone. And that could be a, a false a false reality, I suppose. It's a matter of how you do it, but still. My interpretation of a giggle might not be the same as yours. You might see it completely different and wonder what I'm laughing about. And mental says to me or to the world, think negative. Tell him to go sit down. Didn't ask you. Yeah. That, is that thinking negative, though? Or are you, man, maybe I'm missing something. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Before that, think positive and follow your thoughts. That's from Mental Pancakes. And I missed the whole conversation because I'm yakking here. But 
I like to catch up on the guys and gals and the bots and see what's going on between rants. And what exactly is a positive thought anyway? My positive thought could very well be your negative thought. It just depends on the person and the thought. <laughs> we live in this world that's supposed to be so objective. And when you look at it, it's really not. It's all about how you feel about shit. And what what other crap? There's been crap in the news about shit like... I re uh, I want to be recognized as this new pronoun. And now certain governments want to make it punishable by law to not recognize some weak fuck that doesn't want to be a boy or a girl or a thing. Let's go three. Yeah, boy, girl, thing. No, they don't want to settle for thing. They want a fancier name than thing. I want to be, what is that new one called? Um, not bionic, but it sounds like bionic. <laughs> uh, it's got to do with that numbers thing. Ah, anyway, it'll come back to mind when I cut, stop trying to think about it, about it. But the point still remains. There's two genders on this planet that were, you know, our majority. And the rest of the stuff people are doing. The ones that do it in the public eye, Why? It's nobody's fucking business. Whether you sleep with a toaster, a cat, a woman, a cheese grater, I mean, what you do in your business is your business. So what is the appeal to going out in the public eye and getting a bunch of other creepy weirdos like you, whoever you are, because if I did it, that's the result it would be. Hey, look at all. There's 50, 60-year-old guys with hair down to their butt. I think they're going to riot. <laughs> I mean, everybody, if you took yourself and you took 50 people like you, whatever that is, you'd be a group. So what stops most of us from that uh, superficial, look at me, I'm my freedom is more important and better than yours. I need a group to identify me so I can get protection and be treated gooder. What, whatever happened to live and let live? <laughs> you know that the anarchist scum rhetoric. Do no harm. And I look at this kind of uh, infatuation society has with identity as just exactly how to slap us around and make it look like we're doing it to each other instead of what it truly is. Because they've been working on this for a long, long, long time. I couldn't tell you how, how old the game is, but it seems to me that in America it started in summer to get serious around the 1850s when they started to absorb all the Indian land. When they started to make... 50 states instead of the 13 colonies what was the uh, what was the catalyst to expand and start gobbling up all the rest of the land and make them states and this and that and the other well i don't understand behind all the explanation we've had over the years bunch of bullshit anyway bunch of Europeans saw a bunch of land, didn't give a fuck who was on it. We'll just kill them, get rid of them, give them a little bit of land back, shut them up, and everything will be just fine and dandy. And that's the way it looks like what happened. I might be wrong, but apparently, according to the history books and the people I've spoken to over life, there was already people in lands that were discovered by other people. <laughs> How do you discover something that has a population? Because <laughs> they weren't discovering anything. They were raping and pillaging and looting and murdering. That's what they were freaking doing. Not all of them, but the, the main guy that they call the founder of America, you know, that Columbus butt nugget. Never set foot on on uh, American soil. It was down in the West Indies, raping and pillaging the West Indies. And somehow the historians give them all this credit 
for doing something he didn't do. And by the time I really understood, ah, they were teaching me this shit, and it's not true. Wow. I mean, now, what is true, and what matters? Hmm. I'm going to decide what matters for everybody. Hey, and well then, has just joined the reallibertymedia.com chat to stop in. It's probably looking for Vinny. Vinny or Grim. Oh, he says, hey, Grimner. There you go. He's looking for somebody to chitter-chatter with on the reallibertymedia.com. Yeah. Oh, see? And then he says, I wish Hal was here to chat with me. Chat. Um, Hal is... More or less a Sunday, Sunday and late night on Saturday, Saturday and Sunday after he does his radio, you probably catch him. But he doesn't chat much on the Real Liberty Media. He's a weekender because he prepares his stuff all week and has to work and whatnot to uh, do what he does. He makes it here on the weekend. So I've said that. Uh, anyway, I was trying to be helpful, but I probably failed. <laughs> let's see let me look at my notes and see if i can uh, oh yeah what obligates us to this social insanity that we agree to is it the lack of opt out that keeps us tied to this monster that we're dragging around or have they taken so much away that we're so crowded it doesn't look like there's anywhere to go. I can only imagine. I, I didn't have that that confinement of growing up in one spot and being there through my whole life. I had done a lot of roaming and travel, like Vinny. Uh, maybe not the same way that Vinny does things, but the idea that I could be here for two months and be there for three months and Go back to where I started for a week and then go somewhere else and never been. Did that for, you know, a few years on and off. And uh, and then as I got older, the stays would get longer. But I traveled until, wow, I was uh, 54. <laughs> now, no more the traveling. We are done. Finished. Uh-oh. Now they're having words about something mr dork cakes is screaming yikers on the real liberty media.com chat i'm scared <laughs> yeah grimner's telling um and well then get it on the radio too hell is expected tonight on the real liberty media.com chat and he's always good help when you have those uh legal issues and you need a direction to be pointed into so you can find a solution to your problem and the biggest help that i got from hal anthony over the years was he simplified the legal activity to the basic core of it is um, administration and i've seen so many links before i ever met him on the internet i'd seen a lot of links that showed you ways to defend yourself from government through using their own administration and there comes to a point in each link i saw you ask the government something through paperwork and what your goal is for them to not respond to you and that's the way this paperwork works where the last person spoke and if the other one doesn't take advantage to rebut then that last spoken thing stands. And a lot of folks, they don't follow through to see the details behind all these statutes and codes and games that this Admiralty Court plays with us. They think it's very structured and one size fits all. But no, that's what the lawyers are all about. <laughs> Jeez. This thing is such a farce and a mess and, and a... It's like a bucket of shit. That's my impression of it. I don't I don't see it ever getting better. If it's not replaced, it's just going to continue to do the damage it does. There you go with that. And Mr. Woody and Mr. And well then are chatting about where they live. See, people are getting um, more comfortable. You know, 
Like, I remember when Woody was on his way to Arizona, and now he's living there, and he's got a routine, and he's working, and he's working on his uh, real estate you know, scheme. You know, so he can sell real estate and make some decent fucking money in this life. Well, playing the game brings that to you, and not playing the game is what I do. Uh, hmm. There's never... Uh, I'm not one of those, there's never enough. I like simple. It's so unbelievable. I guess the way I talk on the radio, you would never believe how simple I can truly be. Um, life isn't all about pretty and glitzy and shiny and all that. Life is balanced. It's got its good stuff and it's got its not so good stuff. And you just kind of roll with it. Some people don't. Some people want to make it look as though they're they're standing against something. And this is where my, my freedom is better than yours came in. If we're standing against something, what in the fuck are you talking about that you're standing against? I can't see it. I can read about it. But I don't physically get that behavior out of other humans to actually say yeah I'm, I know what you mean all I know is I see a bunch of horrible crap about how badly people are treated by the enforcement and the bad horrible results of the enforcement and this and that and the other and then I take a walk into the place I live and get a chocolate cupcake and walk down the street unmolested in my activity in society you know, because, hey, you know what they say about people that walk down the street eating chocolate cupcakes on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Watch out for him. He's probably going to do it again someday. And must be stopped for the good of society. Now, I, I say all that crap because I'm kind of thinking about these red flag laws we've been reading about lately. Let's see if I saved a link. Oh, I'm talking about that because I, I know I hit the uh, <laughs> the sperm bill, fentanyl smuggled from China. No, I didn't save it. No, oh, well, here let me let me finish that because Grimner started that, that link. I made jokes about. I'm so proud of myself because I was actually making a farce out of what these people are really. They're really using the words to promote something. And I'm going to read the link one more time after group. Sorry, guys. Lawmakers push sperm bill requiring older men to call the cops when they ejaculate. <laughs> this has got to be priceless. Lawmakers in the state of Georgia have introduced a new bill that takes pro-life logic one step further and aims to ensure that any time men who are 55 or older ejaculate, they would be bound by law to immediately report themselves to law enforcement. Wow. The new bill, House Bill 604, is succinct and cut straight to the point. Any male 55 years of age or older shall immediately report to the county sheriff or local law enforcement agency when such male releases sperm from his testicles. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, hold on. Let me catch up here, guys. That was difficult to do that without laughing. Okay. HB 604, co sponsor, Representative Park Cannon. Get it? Does that tell you something? Park Cannon? <laughs> well, he told the Atlanta Journal Constitution that the bill helps men who are well past reproductive age to self-report when they willfully engage in conception. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. But the bill, which was sponsored by a group of black female Democratic state representatives, isn't simply a case of big government run amok. 
The intention isn't so much a bid to restrict a man's right to choose or to interfere in his reproductive health, but to make a broader point against the state's recently passed heartbeat bill, which aims to ban abortion at any point once a heartbeat is detected in the womb, which can or which often occurs six weeks into a pregnancy before many women are even aware that they are carrying an embryo. Wow, wait a minute. I thought this was about men. Now they're turning it into something different. Well, let me finish this mess. Oh, no, now it goes on. Another proposal, House Bill 481, would also... Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this was more or less uh, like a... A shock jock thing to get you to open it, to read it, die laughing, and then find out, oh, there, it's about abortion. But this bill could never pass. And even if it did, who's it going to affect? The homos? They're going to be going, oh, am I donating? Am I taking? Help, help. I can't think. I can't see this doing. <laughs> I can't. We're going to call the police. Hey, I just fucked my wife. What am I going to do? I'm guilty. Ah! <laughs> Jeez. What a fucking world we're in. Anyway, freedom. See? I mean, geez. My freedom's better than your freedom because I don't have to call the police on myself when I go all. <laughs> he posted it again. <laughs> Grim, why well, was reading? I, I couldn't help it, Grim. That was just priceless. I Because I woke up. You guys were doing that at the end of the Freaker's Ball. And I had to follow it see where it went. Because I've made made jokes about this a couple of times because I think I'm funny. And now, now that I'm seeing they're using that concept, actually using it to write laws. I mean, what are these idiots? Are they running out of shit that they've got to make shit up that's so out of the reality that nobody could possibly take it serious until you change the subject and you start talking about abortion in the bill. And this is what we get. You know, they start talking about this, that, and the other and buried in the middle or at the end or by the time you're tired of reading it, it says, and we're going to give $600 million to Israel for their you know good work in Palestine. And... <laughs> Jeez. And we call this crap law. I, I'm not calling this fucking law. You can call it law if you like to. I don't know what to call it. Fantasy? Oh, I don't know. It can't be fantasy. It's It's got an air of reality to it because we read it. We make jokes about it, which makes it possible. <laughs> Enforcing? I mean, how many fucking laws do these idiots have on the books today that if they even knew they could enforce they'd just be able to pull anybody over at one after the other all day long and just have a cycle of taking you to jail because you broke this law there's got to be like a master list i don't get how they do it they can't possibly just be looking for people breaking traffic laws or going to the wrong house, raiding the wrong people, and shooting everybody. That, it, it, well, Rob Works posts a lot of stuff about that. And I got to admit, I have seen the police uh, fall victim to their own mistakes. <laughs> mistakes. Here we are, because, you know, we're not in a perfect world. Anyway, we got Grimner making a comment to me. No matter how absurd you may think your thoughts about what they might do are, they will top it in reality. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's what I was saying about my freedom's better than your freedom. Or is it the the threat of freedom is more serious where you're at than it is where I'm at? Because there's nothing here for people to... They don't want to control anybody that severely here. You'd have an uprise. They would not tolerate it for 20 minutes. It wouldn't go anywhere. And I think that the government here understands the dynamics of small population versus places that have large, primarily large populations. Like, it seems the Americas have. 
But for some reason, the uh, rural and the smaller places, because their numbers don't give them political representation, nobody recognizes that they even exist. So all we ever read about what's going on is all the shitty things going on in all the overcrowded places that are being treated like shit. And that's your, you know, everywhere, not just, not just America. I'm just American, so I feel I can complain about my home <laughs> if I want to. And I've not seen my people do anything for any fucking buddy ever anywhere in my life, let alone when I was home. I mean, Jesus Christ. Unless you call this... They treat the illegal aliens so good they give them welfare. I wouldn't be able to survive on their welfare money. I don't know how people pan it, you know, actually sur- survive that. That's that's crazy. The government's going to give you this and give you that, but that's all they're going to give you and make it last. How? <laughs> I mean, Christ. Oh, uh, well, anyway, it just opens up more interesting uh, questions than it does offer any answers. So what else have I got? We've got anything to promote this week. Oh, uh, realliberty.org and free. Ah, the wife is bringing some elixir. Oh, I'm getting treated like a human being here in Denmark, let me tell you. It's not. Ah, look at that. Thank you, sweetie. Ha, ha, ha. You know, when you're nice to people, this is the shitty part about life, okay? Uh, some people aren't nice, and we all know that. I'm I'm not known, I don't think known as a rule for my my wonderful, nice side. But then again, when we're bannering about these deep philosophical, you know, representations of government and society on the real liberty might media dot com chat, well, there's no room for civilized, you crazy man. This guy just called your government a bunch of pigs. <laughs> he said Trump couldn't find his ass with both hands and a girlfriend. And, you know, some people are kind of insulted when you talk like that about the POTUS. And some people laugh. And some people don't give a flying shit one way or the other what you say about who or... Because it doesn't matter. It only matters if we get ourselves, you know, like emotionally tied to something. And then the anger starts. In your mind. You know, and it starts cooking. And you get ideas. Hold on, let me cough real quick. <coughs> Whoop, came back too soon. Anyway, what are we going to do with each other in the long run? We're just tapping stuff on a computer. Shouldn't be so uh, traumatic. You know, my opinion about your <laughs> fantasy government, if we treated it like football, what would it be? <laughs> Would it be real? I guess football's real to people too. I see uh who well no, I don't see Moose on here now. But Moose is, like Kate, a hockey fan. So to them, to you know, some level of reality this game it's interesting to them and they know the players and they see the games with so they're it's real to them. And unfortunately for me that's not a side of life that I, I've grown closer to over the years. I've grown away from large groups. The larger the group, the further the fuck away I want to go. And holding on, that idea's got me. Hats had me since uh, Copenhagen. And I like Copenhagen. Uh, I like going to Freetown. I must have went to Freetown at least once, sometimes twice a week for about eight months, give or take. Seven, probably. I think the first month, me and Cirque were... <laughs> well, we didn't go to Freetown much that month, but uh, eventually I got comfortable enough in Denmark to wander around and see what it was all about. And it, it was, so far as I could tell, one of the 
nicest cities I've ever been in, able to navigate. And didn't have any kind of problems with anybody or anything. Not people, police, uh, finding my way around. Just a matter of reading and uh, following a direction. And even I can do that in Danish. doesn't matter what language the signs are in. It matters you find the sign and know where you're at. And here we are. Here we are. And like the greatest minds will tell you, no matter where you go, that's where you're at. <laughs> Who we got? Chat killer. We have a new player after Don C. Meep Meep must be somebody he's familiar with. He meep meeped him. Yeah. What do we got? We got uh, Chat Killer, Grimner, and Miss Kate. Well, it's a chatty little room today. I get a giggle out of that because uh, I enjoy some of the chat on the chat room. I like it better when I agree than when I disagree with people. But uh, I get accused of weirdest shit like uh, <laughs> uh, making up news. I don't make up anything. I've read it on the interweb. Somebody else made it up. I just believe that particular story. That's what I call proof. That's the story that makes sense to me. Not the federal government told me to believe it. No, 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 no. That's, that's kind of an indication of you're putting your pecker into a running mill. Cease and desist. Back away from it. Get Save yourself. <laughs> you don't know a meat grinder until somebody tells you that's what it is. You probably just think, ah, it's just a voting box. <laughs> Surprise. Guess what they get? They do stuff to us when we do that. Or like when we petition. I don't petition. I've seen lots of people petition. And the regulars know, and the unregulars might not have ever heard me say this, but I think if I'm going to petition the federal government to do something that I want, what I'm actually doing is asking my master to stop beating me. And I believe that if you have a master that beats you, and you have the wherewithal to ask him to stop, then you're accepting the beating. The answer is not in please don't. The answer is in you either fight it or you avoid it. But you're never going to get a result out of asking it not to. Why don't you just petition the government to lower taxes too? Hey, drop all this tax crap and, you know, give us a decent form of energy and stop fucking with the food and the water. Please, Mr. Federal Government. <laughs> We're so far beyond even that we just accept what we get all of us because it's uh it's not an individual thing there is no opt out of this game you can't do it the only way you can do that is to live on a mountaintop with a bear some rabbits oh eat some berries and sleep alone and be all by yourself and then you'd be free from all the trappings of the world which would Make, but survival would probably be minuscule. So we do this instead. And there's lots of room and lots of space. Lots of land. But they broke the family down so that now people, if they have two kids, that's, whoa, you got two kids, you big manufacturing plant. One wasn't enough. <laughs> so they've bullshit us with the craziest crap it, like uh like i saw in mines today they got this it's a meme and it's about the population of the world and the color of the people of the population of the world and the white people need to know that they're the minority of the population of the world <laughs> they don't even know they're they're the smallest voice <laughs> and they're, they're the least amount of bodies taking space but Here's the fun part. They use the most resources. If you collect all us whitish, off-white, and white-looking people and showed us all the darker people, they couldn't tell us apart. They wouldn't know an Irish from a Catholic. 
<laughs> Protestant from a Jew. Well, maybe the Jews would give their self away with a nose. And they always, I always notice that nose, no matter what. Just that Jewish, it's predominant. And that deep set fucking beady eyes to steal your shit and take advantage of you look you get. <laughs> I'm joking around, but I'm kind of serious, but I'm joking around. Because it's not nice to be anti-Semitic, and most people that run around preaching all that shit about anti-Semitic don't even fucking know what anti-Semitic is. I don't think the people that wrote the term anti-Semitic know what that fucking means. And it doesn't apply to the problem in the first fucking place. This is a land grab in Palestine. <laughs> That's all it is. Re re just disguised as a religious war. So it'll get the results it gets from the buying public. You gotta save those poor little Jew people from all those Arabs. Why don't you put them right in the fucking center and <laughs> see, see how long you can prop that game up for. Well, it's lasted... We're in, one we're in 2019, so it's last 102 that I've seen written. Could be a fake, but I saw a written document claimed to be from 1917 with the plan to do in Palestine what they're doing. So, mm. now, again with proof, the story I like is the one I believe, and therefore that's proof. And that makes my freedom better than your freedom because I can pick a truth and you can't. <laughs> See how this shit works on us? Get all pompous in yourself about what you know. Look what I know. I'm so smart. I'm a fucking genius, people. Look a bit me. I'm sitting up here on my pedestal and you can be my minions down there looking up at me, praising me for my great knowledge. <laughs> And this is the game that these morons insist on playing. And they do it with religion, education, and government. And every freaking one of these examples, at the end of the freaking game, the guy in charge was a lying, baby-poking, weirdo, creepy Uncle Joe thief. Something is always amiss at the end of the game. Yet, here we are one more time. 2020's coming. We're going to give Trump four more years to do what? He did everything he was going to do in his first week. And that was to get those Goldman Sachs bankers in charge. Put him in positions of decision in the inner workings of the federal government regarding finance. And the difference between the federal government and the Federal Reserve Bank is the Federal Reserve Bank is the one that really does all the deciding, and the federal government is the performance that you see. That's not even real. It's just make-believe. But uh, that's my opinion. I know it's not very popular in the you know freedom-loving world, but there's no other way for me to look at that. Other folk, all I ask of you, Prove I'm wrong. Just show me one example of where, let's pick two, America or Israel has ever done anything for anybody but themselves, ever. And and there's no proof to the opposite. There's only proof for self-seeking and abuse and stealing. I think another three banks were indicted for money laundering and uh, what was the other one? Income tax evasion schemes. And their fine was, I don't, good geez, I forget, billions. It was billions of dollars, and it sounds, wow, look at what the government's going to do to these people for lying. But what does that compare to the amount of money they didn't give them? <laughs> and not only that, but the money all goes into the same little bit of people. This isn't global for everybody. This is global for 1,500 people. And the rest of us are just cannon fodder for their next war. <laughs> oh, man. It's priceless. I 
I don't find it so much amusing as I say, but outside of crying, what are you going to do if you can't laugh at this crap? What are you going to do about it? Snivel and whine? Ooh, look at what Donald Trump is doing to me. Well, I don't think Donald Trump is doing anything to anyone. I think I just read stories about what other people say this particular guy does. And none of it seems possible or true. Outside of the, he gets on a plane and waves at people and then he goes into some private room and, I don't know, blows a cat. Who the fuck is to know? It's all done in privacy. They tell us one thing, but when you look at the guy, he's got the, I've been blowing a cat lips thing going on. And he waves his hands around like an old queen out of West Hollywood. So, I've got my doubts. Of course, that's just me. And that's not even based on his political stand. I don't give a fuck about his political stand. Because there isn't a political stand that satisfies me. They're all crap. They're all about, I'm going to make you do this for your own good, by God and country, and the good of everybody else. But the reality in my life has always been, when you just live around people, not a whole lot of shit goes on. It's when you live in overcrowded, and there's too many of us, and we're all fighting over the same jobs, and we're desperate for this, and behind on this bill, and we need that, and blah, 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 blah. Let's <laughs> see. That's where the confusion with society came in for me, was all the expectation. But no giving. Society doesn't give anything back. It just takes from you. And I don't see that any... Here, it's a little bit different, but not much. I still would just say it's the difference between barbed wire and rope. I can loosen the rope, and at least I don't feel so fucking confined. <laughs> there again, my freedom is better than your freedom because I live in Texas. In Texas, everything's bigger. Freer and better and smarter. <laughs> in how many states, people that live in a state, every fucking state says the same thing. We're United States. But if you're like Arizona, you're next to New Mexico, you go, but fuck Florida. All the weirdos live there. <laughs> fuck California. All the weirdos live there. Blah, blah, blah. It's always an enemy within the United States of the United States. And you have to travel out of the United States to find a fucking enemy. But yet, they're all over the planet. Military, every fucking where. Borders, bombs, planes, trouble. Give me the fuel. Give me the resources. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> and this is our, the best of the fucking best of the fucking best in 2019. And this is the best we can do as a collective well, Levi Strauss is using hemp to make pants. <laughs> oh, that's going to help everybody a whole fucking lot. I guarantee that. Not, hey, do what Henry Ford did in 1943 and make a car out of hemp. Fuel it on hemp. Complete hemp, 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 hemp. No, let's dick around with, we got 50 states. Let's play games with this and drag it out another 20 years so we can pump some more of this second-rate shit into these consumers. Because that's what we are. We're consumers. Because we can't do these things individually or on our own land like time gone by. When they modernized everything, made uh, positions, jobs, and labor are obsolete and started pushing people into the city. This is what they were planning, what we're doing today. And these people are so desperate to control us now. They're, st hey, Doc, they're, my cat, they're still doing the uh, fake shootings. They got a new one down in uh, New Zealand this week. And like I said, sure, 50 people could have died, but... Not in the way that they represent what happened. That's not the truth. And people like Jerry on BitChute just take these films and these explanations and they break them down into 
the reality of what happened and what was filmed versus what you were shown or how you were shown a certain thing. And to me, this stuff's just fascinating, but it, it's not real. I'm beyond reality anymore. Now, my reality is this little life I've got out here in Peacefulville. And if you got a good, like Grimner, you know, a few others, Miss Kate seems um, fairly reasonable, mental pancakes. Uh, and well, then I just met him, uh, Vinny's friend, Michael, but uh, in Salt Lake City. He's not too pleased with Salt Lake City, Utah. And I've read that from, now it's my interpretation from reading your input on the RLM about Utah. Things aren't as good there as you would like them to be. Now, other people on the site have problems as well. Not everybody's living a peachy fucking, oh, Flash in his happy ass dance world. But there were a lot of years, uh, hmm. I've always been like this. I, people have always accused me my whole life of living in la-la land, and you don't want to face reality. You don't want to grow up. You think you're Peter Pan. Oh, I've heard, You name the insult or the accusation, I've heard it. And I think it's just all based around, I am really so against the system that I just do the bare minimum to survive it without them wanting me. And other people have goals. They want to do this. They want to do that. Well, I saw the government, you know, sucking up all the control and all the power. And you have to have permission to do this. And you have to have permission to do that. They went too far. I didn't think enough's enough. But, uh, you know, it, it didn't take much more than the seatbelt to commit convince me that these people are insane and they need to be avoided or stopped but there's <laughs> there's no stopping this you can avoid it or you can back out of it somehow but there, you can't stop this game from going where it's going to go and i guess the, the the proof to that is this new venezuelan crap because if the population hasn't learned that the oil people are playing these games through politics. And then they explain the politics in this country to upset the Americans and the English and the Germans and all these other people. They're reading things or watching links or watching another guy's opinion. And the next thing you know, they're gung-ho to go to fucking war with this other country based on a bunch of crap because a couple of brothers want the oil for a better price so they want a pipeline built and the last thing we need is more of these fucking pipelines and americans are fighting to have more pipelines instead of why don't we figure out what to do with uh, hemp how do, can this replace oil no it can't replace oil no you don't understand it's too expensive uh no what's expensive is the the waste from all the oil is what there's where the cost lies the damage that oil does to the planet is way more expensive than retooling the planet and using hemp the savings to the economy aren't even they're not even on the table the savings to the life forms on the planet would improve overnight because i i believe uh, they've shown me through their uh, examples and their verbal explanation on the internet, lots of people over the time, that oil produces a waste that creates everything else that's going wrong. And how do you tell anyone that? Because oil is the cornerstone of, of our electronic convenience at the moment. And I don't think the average Joe understands if you give something up for a short period of time to replace it with something that works, it's well worth the time to go without it. So what they did was they gave us instant everything for 40 years. Started out with instant coffee, and now look what you got. Robots! We got sex bots, so you don't even have to talk to women no more. You just go get you a vibrator with 
<laughs> electronic parts. I don't know. That whole thing cracks me up. But that's for another store. Another time. Maybe I'll pick that up with Vinny if he shows up on In a Perfect World on Tuesday. But today we did a dork table solo. And my topic, my rant, was all based on My Freedom is Better Than Your Freedom by God and Country. And don't you forget it. And there's some characters on the reallibertymedia.com chat that like to bicker and argue about mundane, boring nonsense, particulars, um, personality traits, living conditions, very judgmental. <laughs> hey, mental. I took mental's name and made a joke out of it. Ah, I should be shot. But yeah, um, I do it too. I mean, I'm not... I'm not any different than anybody else. I type what I think at the time I think it. And then later I get accused of you're spreading disinformation and writing for CNN. <laughs> I was just, oh, cry that one. I wish I was as important as some people think I think I am, but no. Just another voice in this crazy world full of... Um, People, <laughs> we're just people. And once you really get that, I think that's what helps me. It was when I just realized I'm just another people in this world. And, you know, if I'm special to Cirque, that's a good enough. I don't need to be special to millions of people on Facebook and Twitter. I don't give a shit if they like me or not. They don't sleep with me at night. So out of sight, out of mind. And luckily for me, I've got one of those really small minds where there's only room for like one or two people at a time, let alone, you know, who's going to live with me. Um, beyond three people in a conversation, I lose interest real quick. <laughs> so you can imagine how much um, fun and games it can be in a chat room when there's 10 people with an opinion. And we're going to close out. My freedom is better than your freedom on the dork table. On this 23rd of March, 2019. And one more time. Hey, there's Miss Kate. Uh, say hey to my number one fan. Miss Kate makes a big fuss when she's going out somewhere. And I got a podcast going. She'll let me know she's taking me in her pocket. So she can listen when she's doing other crap. And uh, I get a kick out of that. Because we've got reruns. And, you know, you can always catch the link later. But. When you like something live, and that's I think that's the thing I'm not concerned with anymore. Live doesn't matter. I'll listen to the rerun. Sometimes I need to get my beauty sleep. <laughs> right, honey, I need to get my beauty sleep at night. 14 hours. Every day, at least. And with that, we're going to say the uh, upcoming uh, lineup. Where's How do you do that list? Did I hit... Let me try this on the RLM chat. Uh, I forget what it's called, though. Let's see what I get when I do list. I didn't get anything. How do you show me that one, Grimner, on the main feed of uh, getting the program listing on here? Or I can just go over to my other. I got another thing open. And spew off a few uh, numbers here. Let me find them. And the Real Liberty media.com chat now i can't remember i'm gonna just go off memory i can't do all this navigating <coughs> oh thank you back mr and miss kate and today is saturdays tomorrow morning we got the grimner coming on in the morning with the blues plays the blues into trivia where all the greatest minds of the 20th century we all combine our brilliant minds together and compete on the trivia game until Hal Anthony comes on with Behind the Woodshed from the West Coast at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Then Monday night, Grimner comes on with Grim Leftovers, the leftovers from the Freaker's Ball he didn't have time to read, and he's been doing pretty good with that. I've been catching him every week. I can't do him live, but I catch the podcast. And he's on BitChute, YouTube, and I don't know if you can do the podcast on Twitter. I guess you can. Uh, but he's in all the usual places. Spreaker and iHeartRadio. He's the one that this is about. 
I just do a lot of radio because nobody else is wanting to do it. If somebody wants to replace me, just come right on. Because uh, when Minnie and Vinny were disagreeing, he goes, Wow, you guys sure got a lot of shows. Yeah, well, nobody else wants to do it. So there you go. <laughs> and Tuesday night, see, speaking of me being on a lot, <clears throat> I come on with In a Perfect World at uh, 1 o'clock on the East Coast in the United States. And that should be 7 o'clock p.m. my time. And then Miss Mary Graham Z. She has the Rocket Chair podcast on Wednesday and Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast. And then in the middle on Thursday. I was trying to do a late night thing. I had to back it up. And we have a time zone difference right now for one more week. But 2 p.m. is my plan to be live. I just got to remember it's an hour earlier still for me. <laughs> I don't... I don't keep up with the clock like everybody else. I try so hard. I'm just a failure at the clock. Very late. I'm the latest person you will ever know. And uh, 2 o'clock on Thursday with 20% off. And then Friday night, Miss Marriott, 7 with a rocket chair. And after that is Grimner and Moose Girl that do the Freakers Ball. Unless Moose has escaped uh, Wisconsin and gone to a festival or a some kind of concert, and Grimm will do the balls to the wall. Other than that, I think things are back on normal because I heard her this morning when I woke up. But you never know if she can escape that woman. She'll go out for a concert or a festival over doing Breaker's Ball once in a while. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody, for hanging around on the dork table this month, week, day, time. And we'll see you later. Over and out.